Welcome. This is solving quadratic equations by completing the square. Uh, technically, it's what I'm going to call solving gross or disgusting quadratic equations by completing the square. Essentially, we're dealing with completing the square problems that have irrational things in there or imaginary numbers, just gross stuff that nobody wants to deal with, but you have to anyway. Uh, I'm going to follow the same sort of methodology I was using uh, in the previous video, so if you hadn't seen that, it might be a little confusing about where I'm going with all of it, so go back and check that out. It should be called basically the same thing as this, except it doesn't have the word gross in it or something. Anyway, n squared minus 14n plus 91 equals 3. Previous video, we always uh, I stated that the first thing I always do in these is try to get the constant terms by themselves. So I'm going to get rid of this plus 91 make minus uh, put minus 91 here. So these cancel. I end up with n squared minus 14n equals and this is supposed to be a 91. That's basically completely illegible, so I'll try that. Uh, that should give me negative 80 Eight. So things are not looking good because you shouldn't see a constant term with a negative. But from here, I'm going to go ahead and make my half square because we always said uh, before that was the second step. So I'm going to take the term in front of the n here and I'm going to cut it in half and get negative 7 and then I am going to square that term. That's the term that I want to add to both sides. So I'm going to add 49 to both sides of this equation. n squared minus 14n plus 49 is equal to negative 88 plus 49. So negative 88 plus 49, we'll go ahead and combine those together and make negative 39. On the other side, I'm going to think about, okay, well, I want to turn this into a square, and that was the reason I ha did made the half square. And I can think like, okay, if I want it to be n minus something, and that whole term squared, that something is really my half right here. So I'm going to recreate this n squared minus 14n into n minus 7 squared. And if you don't believe me, check your math and it'll show you that that is n minus 7 squared. So from here, we're going to take the square root of both sides. So it's going to get ugly. So for one side of this, I'm going to get n minus 7. And on the other side, I have to deal with the square root of negative 39. So I might look through negative 39 just to get a feel for whether I think that there's a square inside because I want to make sure that if it's possible to do simplest radical form that I definitely consider that to be an option but it's not looking good. I don't think any of the squares go into negative 39. To do that, by the way, you could divide, I uh, think the squares would be 4, 9, 16, 25, those things. Just go in and divide 39 by them and see if you can put it into simplest radical form. But I can't do it here. But what I can do is deal with the idea that there is a negative inside of a square root, so this is going to be an imaginary number. So I'm going to say that this is plus or minus i times the square root of 39. Told you they were disgusting and gross. So to do this, I can go ahead and the, the only nice thing about this ugly problem is that I can go ahead and just skip over trying to do two separate problems and just add 7 here and add 7 here. So my final answer when I work all of that out would be n is equal to 7 plus or minus the square root or sorry plus or minus i times the square root of 39. I'll check my answer here, cross my fingers. So as you can see, 7 plus i times square root of 39, 7 minus i times square root of 39. But most of the time, you can just get away with writing it just like this, because it's the same exact thing. And if you do have the i, you do have to put it out in front of the square root. But, you know, these are gross. It's just the way that they are, so don't freak out. Just follow the system. It'll work. So for the next one, x 
squared plus 8x plus 8 equals negative 3. I'm just going to follow the same steps that I was following before. First thing that I need to do is get the constant term all by itself. This is not looking good again because I'm getting another negative constant term here, and it would be negative 21. So now it's time to make my half square. So I'm going to go over and take 8 divided by 2 and get myself a nice 4 to work with, and then I want to square 4, give myself 16. I want to use this to add to both sides in my next step. x squared plus 8x plus 16 equals negative 21. Whoops. Flip the numbers there. A little dysgraphia because I wrote it wrong. Plus 16. Uh, so negative 21 plus 16 is just negative 5. At least it gets us down to a nice place that's easier to work with than before, so winner, winner there. Then I need to build my square, and if you remember, the number that was the half is what I'm going to use to build that square with, x plus 4 squared. If you want to pause the video and test to make sure x plus 4 squared does give you x squared plus 8x plus 16, feel free to do that. If not, move on to the next step, which is take that square root. So I end up with x plus 4, and then 5 doesn't reduce, no squares go into it or divide into it, so I'm going to have i because it is negative, but it's plus or minus i times the square root of 5. Now I just need to get rid of this plus 4, so I'm going to subtract 4, giving me a nice, pretty final answer of x equals negative 4 plus or minus the square root of i, or so plus or minus i times the square root, that's what I should say, of 5. Once again, a gross answer, and it's not very pretty, but it is correct. So they're not that hard to do, it just you have to let yourself believe that those could possibly be answers. No sane person would give these as answers, but it doesn't matter if they're sane or not, they gave the answers. Uh, so for the last one that I'm going to do, because I think that I accidentally slipped a non-ugly one in here, and I don't want to get your hopes up. So in this one, minus 28. This is not the pretty one I slipped in there, by the way. 11a, uh, negative 30. So from here, uh, now that I have the constant term all by itself, I need to think about, OK, I need to make my half square. And this one's even uglier than before, because then you have to do 11 divided by 2, which gives you 11 over 2. You know, what else are you going to do with it? Uh, I would suggest you leave it in fraction form because it'll be easier later on to see that you can maybe or maybe not make square root. Um, anyway, from there, I'll need to square it. So 11 over 2 squared is 121 over 4. So I'm going to do that, uh, deal with that on both sides. Like I said, these are gross. So a squared plus 11a plus 121 over 4. On the opposite side of that, I'm dealing with negative 30 plus 30, 121 over 4. Well, 130, or sorry, 30, I'm sorry, times 4 would give you 120. So what I'm really dealing with is negative 120 over 4, which does make for a kind of a, a less ugly thing than before because it just ends up being 1 fourth. Now, on the flip side of this, I'm dealing with a plus, and here's where the ugly part comes in, because remember, our half is the part that goes there, so 11 over 2. Yuck, all around. Good news is when I take the square root, 1 over 4 is a square, because 1 is a square and so is 4. So you end up with a plus 11 over 2 is equal to plus or minus 1 half. So I can actually get two answers that I can solve for here. So for the first one, I'm going to do a plus 11 halves 
is equal to positive one half, and then I'll do a plus eleven halves is equal to negative one half. So I need to subtract eleven halves here, and that looks like negative ten over two or negative five. On the flip side of it, minus eleven over two on this side. So my answer would be negative 6 and 5, or my answers or solutions, I should say, are these two. So it actually did turn out pretty. See, I said there was a pretty one in here, and I tried to make you think this wasn't it, but it actually turned out to be pretty nice. Oh, I forgot this is negative 5, and I forgot to write the negative there. So don't make that mistake when you do, if you do all this work and you write down a negative or that's not there, or you forget a negative, you're doing yourself a serious disservice. So make sure you don't do that. All right, one more. So if you noticed a glitch in the video, it's because my computer decided that it would be a great idea to take a nap right in the middle of this. So I'm going to tack on one that has a lot of weird stuff in it. So it's the ugliest of uglies, if I were to make that sort of uh, reference here. Anyway, x squared plus 11x plus 65 equals 8. Of course, the first step, as we've talked about throughout the duration of this thing, is that you want to get your constant term by itself. So I need to subtract 65 from this side. That way I sort of have that feel of the x squared equals 9 thing. That's the whole goal of it all. And you get negative 57 on this side. So I'm going to rewrite it over here a little bit bolder as x squared plus 11x plus, or sorry, equals, not plus, equals. What was the point of rewriting it? The original problem equals negative 57. And once again, I'm a little nervous about the idea that it has that negative 57 in it because that could lead to an imaginary number. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and spoil everything and say that it will. So now that I've got this set up, I need to get my half square. So 11 helps to have your half square when your pen's on. 11 over 2, or 11 divided by 2 is just 11 over 2. And when I square it, I end up with... 121 over 4. So this is the number that I'm going to add to both sides of this equation over here. So I need to go in and rewrite it as x squared plus 11x plus 121 over 4 equals negative 57 plus 121 over 4. Now, from here, I need to go ahead and convert negative 57 into its uh, fourth component. So I need to do negative 57 times 4 and get 228, or negative 228. So I'm going to rewrite negative 57 as negative 228 over 4. I was just getting a common denominator there. That wasn't some you know, really difficult math. It was just me doing basic uh, math anyway. So negative 228 plus 121, because I have a common denominator, gives me negative 107 over 4. On the other side, now that I know that I have something that I can make a square out of, I'm going to use, of course, the 11 over 2 to say x plus 11 over 2 squared. That's kind of how I'm going to work that one. From here, I need to go ahead and take my square roots here and here. Now, the this side, of course, on the left side, it's just x equals x plus 11 over 2. On the other side, the 4 can have a square. And the benefit of that in this case is that the square of 4 is just positive 2. So I'm going to leave the square root of negative 107 because nothing really goes into this uh, to negative 107. So that's out. So what I'm going to end up with is the square root of negative 107 over 2. But as you know, uh, negatives inside the square root just become imaginary. So what I really end up with is I'm going to write it a little bigger as well. The square root, or so, sorry, i times the square root, sheesh, i times the square root of 107 over 2. And remember, that's plus or minus. So from here, all I need to do is get rid of the 
x plus 11 over 2 so I can get the x by itself. So I need to subtract 11 over 2 from both sides. So over in the left corner here in purple, I'm going to put your final answer. I end up with x is equal to negative 11 over 2 plus or minus the square root, or so i times, i times the square root of 107 over 2. It's a beastly problem, and that i looks terrible because I started saying the square root because in my head a lot of the previous problems had it. So i times the square root of 1 over 7 over 2. And you can even combine those together if you want since they have a common denominator and turn it into negative 11 plus or minus i times the square root of 107 and all of that goes over 2. That's okay to do as well. So I'm going to check my answer to make sure that I'm correct. If I'm not, then that'd be pretty embarrassing. So there it is. Negative 11 plus or minus and this is just both versions of it, uh, square root of 107 over 2. It is a beastly problem. I'm not going to lie to you. It's a tough problem to get correct uh, using completing the square, but you do get a full answer, and it works pretty much every time. So even though it might get ugly, it might be worth your time to consider completing the square.